What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Brother Hush. Ah, oh, man. Look who I got on the show with me. Now, now, listen, listen. When you're looking at the screen, you're looking at a pretty devil dog. Not only are you looking at a pretty devil dog, you are looking at an author. Wait, what's that on your mantelpiece? You're looking at an Emmy Award winning pretty devil dog. I'm telling you, like, listen, he's so suave. He's so smooth. You're about to learn about communication and you're about to learn how to just expand your brand and talk about messaging. This man knows about it. I'm talking about the one and the only. Now, listen, Colonel, Colonel, Colonel Player. Can I call you Colonel Player? Colonel Player Colonel, from the Himalaya. Come on. Colonel brother, Player brother. from the Himalaya. Now, listen, listen, listen. <laughs> right now, you, you, you're you still serving. After 30 plus years of service in the United States Marine Corps, you are still serving uh, you're you're the commanding of services battalion over at, at uh, hey, Paris Island, right? Battalion Paris Island, yes, sir. Yeah, you you are churning out the devil dogs. You are there, boots on ground, but you're also oh my gosh, you worked at so many. Let me let listen. This is our African American History Month show, but we just going to talk about it. The man done served uh, thirty plus years. You've done it all from the Pentagon level. You you started out as enlisted, yes. and you, you Mustang it up. Let's just go right into the interview. If people, if you don't know who Colonel Player is, just Google it. Just Google it. Just Google Rico Player. It's beautiful. Command photo comes up. You see the whole resume. You're like, bam, bam, bam. Let's, after 30 plus years of service, let's, let, let, let me get serious. After 30 plus years of service in the military, you know, what were your top three favorite assignments and why? First of all, thank you. Thank you for this platform. Thank you for uh, telling stories. Thank you for iron sharpening iron as military supports military. You're at the, the, the tip of the spear. So thank you for what you do. Um, it's an honor and a privilege to be here uh, communicating with you. Um, top three. I don't, I don't know if there's a top three, uh, honestly, uh, but, but if I had to rack them and stack them, if I was put under the gun, um, it would have to be Marine Barracks 8th and I as a, as a Lance Corporal and Corporal because I was learning the basics there, learning how to make a, a rack, learning how to march, learning how to, how to slide and glide and pop a salute. Um, and, and it was the first exposure to uh, the high level, high visibility uh, mission that Marine Barracks had. And that mission is to kind of answer questions for Capitol Hill, uh, bring issues uh, from 8th and I, from the Marine Corps to the Capitol. And in this ironic, um, Greg, should I call you Greg? Should I call you Mr. Hush? Should I call you Brother Hush? What should I call you? I, uh, call me Hush. Just call me <laughs> Hush. Just call me Hush. Just call me Hush. And, and keep on going. Keep on going. Okay. Keep on keep on talking your stuff. Go ahead. So, so I was there, you know, 30 plus years ago. And at the time, unbeknownst to me, a congressperson, and to this day, I don't know who it was, but a congressperson was attending the parade um, and they looked across the parade deck and they said, there aren't many you know, dark faces in the formation. And at that time, um, you know, the call went out and, and more and more you know, African-American uh, Marines were, were pulled into Marine Barracks 8th and I. Um, so it, it's gradual. I mean, that's, that's almost a generation later you know, that this all unfolded. Uh, have things changed? Things have kind of ebbed and flowed. It, it hasn't been consistent. I don't know if you're ever gonna see an all black uh, company there um, because of the height requirement, you know, not, not because the Marine Corps isn't making leaps and bounds, but because of the height requirement. Um, the second post would probably have what uh, I would say Congressional Fellow Chicago Tribune. And, and there I was given a year to, you know, be away from the Marine Corps proper, uh, grew out my fro, uh, had a mustache and goatee and learned the newspaper process. And yes, granted, the newspaper industry has changed significantly. A lot of entities have dissolved, but at that time, Chicago Tribune was looking to, to turn towards what we're doing right now, a, a more digital platform. But being the Pulitzer, Pulitzer Prize winning entity that, it, that it, it still has earned those, that recognition, I was you know borrowing, stealing, grabbing as much knowledge as I could to take back to, with me to the Marine Corps. Uh, after that year, I, I went out to Camp Pendleton and, and we earned a Thomas Jefferson Award uh, for best newspaper in the Department of Defense. So, uh, so those, those lessons learned were indeed valuable. And I always have to say the uh, uh, right now here aboard Paris Island is, is, is 
you know, this is my last tour, this is my twilight tour, I'll be retiring this, this summer. But this tour, um, as the headquarters and service battalion commander, in addition to the task force commitment commander for my entire tour, and that was the team that took, before you could report here as a poolee, you had to come see me for 14 days of quarantine, issue your, your uniforms, uh, ensure that you're healthy and ready to train once you arrive at Paris Island. We successfully moved about 21,000 poolees from various locations in the United States to here aboard Paris Island so they could uh, begin their training. So I would say, uh, Brother Hush, th those were my, my top three. Wow, wow, wow. Talk, talk, talk your stuff, talk your stuff, kind of player. All right, now, now everybody's just looking at the Emmy. They're like, Hush. Ask them about the Emmy. Ask them ask about, about the, the Emmy. Emmy. Ask I gotta about ask Emmy. about the Emmy. We gonna talk about the book, but we gotta <laughs> ask about the Emmy. You know, Fair too many double dogs with an Emmy. And, and, I, I, the Emmy, how'd you get it, and what did it take? So for for the Emmy Award, Denfo's trained killer that you are. I was uh, in the National Capital Region, and um, it was I want to say eighteen. I'm, I'm always off with with dates, and my wife always keeps me on target. But it was I believe 2018, and I had just arrived at the Pentagon to be the, the deputy director of public affairs. And uh, the, the director of the video, which, and I'll get to the, the MEPs, but Rick Robinson, he was there and they were going to attend uh, the, the Emmy ceremony. And I said, can I go? And Rick was gracious enough to allow me to go. And I just saw all the, the content and these different teams vying for you know, the, the golden lady. Um, at that time, Rick Robinson's team, they were nominated but they lost to DMA, Defense Media Activity, over their Defense Information School. And, and as I, pu I peeled the onion back, I said, well, wait, DM, they, they work for us. How is it that, that they won? So I saw their content, phenomenal, phenomenal content. And I said, well, why, why can't we earn one of those? And uh, so I started you know, asking Rick Robinson more and more questions about the process uh, as I, unfolded that I found out he had earned an Emmy before he joined our team there at the Pentagon. I said, you know, Rick, your skills are, I believe are underappreciated. And uh, I think we can earn one of those. So it was for the, the 2019 uh, Commandant of the Marine Corps birthday video. That's what that Emmy is for. And, and we pushed the envelope. We did some things that were um, unorthodox and, and new and unusual, um, but, but there was a, a why behind all of it. And uh, at the time, uh, the, the commandant gave me a lot of creative license uh, to, to achieve that goal. So it, it was a blessing working with Rick Robinson and the entire team. And, and it just proved that when you give a Denfos trained killer enough tools and resources, um, they can do great things. Now, listen, and then uh, hold on, hold on. I got it. I got to educate people. You keep on saying Denfos. I am a Denfos graduate. You are you used to be the, the Marine Corps Denfos commandant, correct? No, no, there's never been the, a Marine commandant the, the, there. Not, I was not the yet. Debt commander, though. You were the debt I, commander, yeah. yeah. So, Defense Information School, that is basically where all military service members, when they get into mass communications, public affairs, they go to Fort Meade, Maryland, they learn how to basically shape the force story, they learn photography. Now it's social media, you learn marketing, you learn uh, 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 digital advertising, you learn like basically every kind of writing, whether it's human interest, whether it's feature writing, like you learn everything. You become a, a all-encompassing, just news reporter, speech writer, producer, uh, everything. So if you are in the, if you are like in the military and you have a talent for writing, yeah, that's where you need to go. You need to reclass. And if you're just watching this and you're like, oh, I just thought that journalism was was like that uh, Stan Kirby movie. Uh, gosh, darn it. What is the what is the movie that that has the, the scary drill sergeant in it again? And Joker, huh? Full metal jacket. <laughs> no, that is not how all military journalists are. And Colonel Player will tell you that. He Absolutely. is the top devil dog. So <laughs> Let's let's get into a question that I love asking officers, okay. and I really feel like sometimes they like to zhuzh it up and they like to put the cool whip on top and just smooth it out. Give me the real deal, Colonel Player. 
what have been some pitfalls over your 30 plus year career that you have just experienced and you have learned from? Brother Hush, brother Hush, brother Hush, come on now. <laughs> come, now. come on now. Let it let it out. You you unvarnished. You... <laughs> so now so what he didn't tell the listeners is that you know he's headed to officer candidate school. He's making the transition. Mm, 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 mm. I'm gonna disappear right now. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. So what are some of the things you've learned? What, so, what, so what are some of the obstacles? You already have the foundation. You have the backbone. You have the, you're anchored in what officers depend on. And that's strong staff and COs to execute lawful orders as directed. You take that commander's intent and you execute. And you reach back for the commander if, hey, all right, this is a bridge too far or I need more resources or I need more people or I need. Um, I think that's the first thing that you'll discover as an officer is that you have to figure out everything. Uh, pitfalls have been the people in the sense that um, everyone goes to a unit determined to do their best, to do good for the unit, to do good for the greater good. There are a few haters out there. They, they, they guzzle haterade every day. And, um, and, and some are, are subtle, some are overt, uh, but I think that's been the pitfall for me um, th throughout my career. Overall, it's been fantastic. Uh, the, the haters are a few. Um, they usually isolate themselves and, and you know who they are. They, they make it pretty clear based on their actions or, or their comments that um, they're, they're in it for themselves and, and not for, um, for what could best benefit the unit. You know, Rico Player doesn't do anything for himself. Um, my focus, my intent, my, my direction is always to, um, to, to lift as I climb. If I'm climbing, I want to pull somebody with me. And hopefully the information, the knowledge, the things that I share, someone coming behind me with, with even greater aspirations, they won't hit the same trip wires, the same potholes that I hit. They can avoid those and, and maybe find some new ones. Mm, mm, that's what I'm talking about. Now, I always like to do this, each one, teach one, teach the younger generation, teach the junior, you know, enlisted service members across all branches. Uh, top three tips that you, that, you know, you as a commander, you know, what do you like to pass on to the junior enlisted? Brother Rush, hush, hush, hush. <laughs> the, the, the main thing I think, um, and, and I kind of, I fine tuned it as a commander because as a junior, as a Lance Corporal, as a corporal even, um, you would go to the read board. I don't know if read board still exists because everything is digital now, but for the Marine Corps, there's still some places within the unit where all the, the key information is posted. Critical information, liberty bounds, you know, for a 72 hour liberty pass, how far can I go? What's the mileage? Um, the the officer of the day, the, the NCO of the day, the sergeant of the guard, all the, there's a lot of information posted. Unfortunately, as a commander, uh, I have to post my my commander's intent. And, and I've seen, you know, commander's intent several pages. I've seen a page. It, it, it depends on the commander, whatever works for them, but whatever amplifies their personality. For me, Brother Hush, that the main thing is anyone I serve with, I say, take one thing from me. And it's in the book. Take this one thing from me. And there's a formula in there. And I, I wish I could show it to you. Um, and I can. There's a formula in there that, um, that I posted throughout the battalion because they see all the information and it's overwhelming. But when they saw my command philosophy, it, it stood out. Uh, it, it stood out because it looked like a math problem. And a lot of folks, some folks, uh, some of the haters, they say, well, what is this? I mean, we're, we're not mathematicians. Why didn't he just tell us what he wants us to know with his, with his command philosophy? The point, Brother Hush, was that if, if you saw it and you were confused, if you read it, it said, ask the Sergeant Major or ask Colonel Player to talk to you about this. Number one, it, it was buzzing throughout the battalion. Folks were talking about it. Number two, as I walked around with my Sergeant Major, I only asked one question. What'd you think of my command philosophy? And if they gave me the, you know, the I don't know shoulders, then I engaged them and, and, and helped unpack it. And I explained what it was. And it breaks down to this. It's three squared, two SIPD, 
AGNS seven, and and it's and it's you know it's spread out. So three squared is three squared meals a day. Two SIPD, two hours of self improvement slash professional development. AGNS, this this one, and it wasn't stump the chump, but this one kind of confused a lot of folks. But brother brother Hush, you need AGNS. I need it. Our family needs it. We all need it, but it's different for all of us. A good night's sleep was seven, seven days a week. So that formula, Brother Hush, that formula is not just in uniform, it's in civilian clothes. It's when you go to officer candidate school, it's in life. If you're doing those things, you're taking care of yourself. If you take care of yourself, the mission takes care of itself. Keep it simple, right? Speaking too much sense over here. <laughs> I have to give this formula to a couple of commanders that I used to have. That's Anyways, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to talk about the book. We're going to talk about the book and we're going to talk about Warrior Voices. Um, so now I got to segue into that because, okay. you know, I had to get a little bit of, of your history and segue into it. So public affairs, marketing, all all of the things that encompass mass communications, you know, what have been some of the lessons learned throughout your career about marketing stories? I think that's the hardest thing is marketing a military story to the civilian populace because the taxpayers are just like, why? And I really feel that it not only goes from the military uh, sphere, but to the veteran sphere. What have you learned about marketing stories and how can military organizations and veteran organizations get better at it? Brother Hush, that, that is a phenomenal question in the sense that um, as a military, we're always a few steps behind, be it with personnel or funding. And then the third piece of that is, is commander buy-in. So as a commander, I push the, the public affairs team here, even though it's the general's team, I try and and maneuver into that space wherever I can, because there are about 960 folks in my battalion, give or take. And for the public affairs team, if they have a slow day and they say they don't have anything to do or they're not covering anything, uh, I got 900 plus stories to be told in this battalion, you know, just, just elementary at, at the very base level. Marketing is, is so elusive and, and so challenging. I won't say difficult, it's challenging because, you know, we're already at it. Uh, an impasse to begin with. We need the commander buy-in. And, and, and if it's not exploding or somebody touching a person who's not theirs or someone who's taking some money that doesn't belong to them or bleeding or, you, you know, those headline grabbing things, it's, it's all, um, you know, Johnny comes marching home and the mom and pop taxpayer don't always want to hear that. So what I encourage professionals to do is, is be a storyteller first and foremost, uh, make it compelling, make someone, uh, regardless of whether they're in civilian clothes or in a military uniform, be interested in the why and, and don't insult anyone in the sense that um, some of the best storytellers that, that I've run into, can, they can tell a, a compelling story about this pen or about this cup or about a post-it note. That is the, is the, the craft of what we do. The, the science of it is, is everything in the textbook. The art of it is what we're doing right here. You and I sharing best practices, sharing lessons learned, each one of us sharpening one another for the craft, for the greater good of the Department of Defense, if that makes sense. Now, we, we got to talk about warrior voices. I mean, can, can I, I, you, got, you got it in there. It's, the it's branded. Voice. <laughs> it's, it's branded. It's right there. And and what is the whole objective for people that you want to expose to the brand? So for the warrior's voice, Brother Hush, you have a warrior's voice. Your children, they have a warrior's voice. My wife has a warrior's voice. I have a warrior's voice. My business partner, we all have that voice in us that tells us go left, go right, go center for the right thing, for the right reason to make a positive difference. Uh, criminals have a warrior voice, but it, but it goes in the other direction. I don't wanna to talk to them. I want to talk to folks who have been tested, who've survived a crucible, 
who have come out on the other side transformed and here's why. So if it's a, a, a mom, a, a single parent mom struggling to put some, some food on the table, if it is you know, the, the, the high-end senior staff and CEO or officer, if it's someone in the middle, uh, a band director, um, I mean, we run the gamut. If, if there's someone who has been tested, who has, who has stared into the abyss, did not blink, went through and came out on the other side transformed, those are the folks that we want to talk to. I'm going to see a whole lot of people in your DMs. I got a story <laughs> and I got to tell you now. You I hope so. spouses, my husband, <laughs> <laughs> my wife. <laughs> Listen, we need that. We need Absolutely. that. And I, I think that, you know, oftentimes veterans, they feel like, oh, my story is not worth telling. Or the, the wife, the husband that supports that service member has supported them for years. The kids, the military brats, you know, the veteran employers. Absolutely. They, they, they don't think that their story matters and your story matters, okay? So let's get into it, African-American History Month. Um, three figureheads. You know, could be from history, could be current, could be military figures, could be, you know, uh, uh, veteran, uh, veterans or anybody of the civil rights movement, anything. African-American history, three figureheads who've influenced you or you've modeled yourself after. You are ultra consistent with your rule of threes. I have to give it to you, give you props for that. Um, uh, without question, Dr. King, it, it, it goes without saying just the 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 time his his commitment to nonviolence the the struggle being real and, and evolving and just you know with, without king we wouldn't have today as a given um i would have to say general powell uh when i was at the pentagon uh, i was the public affairs officer for international travel for secretary rumsfeld and and the the cabinet would come over frequently and then they would have touch points and it was in a transition phase and Condoleezza Rice and, um, and, and General Powell were coming down a hallway there in the Pentagon. And I, you know, I was flying on the wall just trying to get the heck out of the way. Um, and he stops, hey, Marine, how's it going? And I'm like, just like frozen because it's just General Powell. You know, hey, sir, it's outstanding. Um, you know, just, uh, it, it, it's, it's, I just want to say thank you. Stay sharp. And that was it. And I was just, yeah, I was, I didn't know, and I'm, I'm rarely at a loss for words, but it just caught me off guard because Connelly's right. She just bolted right by, boom. And I saw him and I, like I said, I stepped back and, and he, maybe he saw what was going on, but, but that, that stayed with me. Um, years later, as a, as a Lieutenant Colonel and he was, you know, retired, uh, I reached out for his uh, Red Wagon program, his, his nonprofit, reached out and um, never got in touch with him uh, but it was through his staff and, and, and working towards uh, contributing to what he was doing with his, with his nonprofit. Um, later, he saw my name on a document and, and gave a call and, and asked how I wanted to contribute to, to their mission. I said, sir, in, in any capacity that I could, because of PCS and other things that never developed, but for him to take the time, remember the name, because Rico Player, you know, it's, it's a blessing and a curse. Folks for often <laughs> use it to their advantage. Um, but but he was just one of those genuine moments that connected later on where it's like, wow, steal that. Make every interaction count and, and make it special for folks if you're a senior person with, with a junior person because you never know how you're going to impact them. And I would say the last one is uh, General Peterson, our first African-American general uh, in the Marine Corps, aviator, um, served during a very, very difficult time in the Marine Corps um, as, you know, as the, the Jim Crow laws across the United States were evolving, uh, the Marine Corps was kind of on a, on a trickle path. And, and General Peterson was, was kind of caught in that, but not deterred. And I think uh, his strength, his determination, his will not to fail, just uh, incredible. At, at a time when, you know, trying to, to be an aviator, um, being the only one uh, questioned about the validity of, are you really an officer? It, it was, he dealt with all of that and, and, um, 
and, and without his achievements, there, there's several officers behind him. What, whatever ilk of minority that you are, he opened a lot of doors. So I, I would say those are the three. Mm. I can't beat that. I was just trying to think in my head. I was like, General Powell, you know, I got, you know, I got him already on my Mount Rushmore. And you know what? I'm not going to give you my three. We're not going to do this exchange. You're not right now. It's all about you, current player. So listen, uh, website, okay, off the record, where can people get it? Okay. Outstanding. And, and basically, you know, where can people follow you? So uh, off the record, it's available. Amazon, um, that's, it was I'm, I self-published a whole another piece of that, but it is on Amazon and it's five dollars, four ninety eight exactly. Because I'm not, I don't drink coffee. I don't knock folks who do, but if they can spend five dollars for coffee, they can buy the book, and it's a quick read. Um, uh, the Warriors' Voice it is available on, on on all platforms, all music platforms, and, and like I said, I'm transitioning towards retirement. Uh, so so those two are, are my main right now, but there's a lot coming from uh, my my LC. Um, is the Consortium of Military Veterans in Media and Consulting. And, and that uh, is crawling right now, as I can't go full bore until I, I retire, but there will be some exciting things coming from the company, believe me. There you got it, everybody. You, it just, just Amazon, off the record, it pops up. Rico Playa, <laughs> all right, the Warrior's Voice, it'll pop up. Right there. You want to follow the man? You want to talk to him? You know, just, just. now, like I said, if you go into the DMs, you're trying to be on the show, talk about I got a tribulation story for you. And you're trying to go Tyler Perry. I mean, he may he has his own casting call and everything for y'all. Absolutely. But anyway, thank you so much, Colonel Player, for joining the final life. Listen, everybody, www. Y'all know I do this every show. www.mbphikings2017.org. www.mbphikings2017.org. You want to follow us? Listen, the final life series. Listen, we on iHeartRadio. We on Spotify. We on Amazon Music. We there too. Shoot. <laughs> we're, we're just saying on there too. We on there too. Listen to his show. Listen to my show. Listen to both shows. All right. It, you can never get too much veteran content. There you go. Listen, if you're a junior soldier, service, uh, uh, Marine, uh, vet, uh, uh, a veteran, any, anything military veteran related, and you want to know about communication, just keep listening to this show over and over again because it is very important to share your story and to share all of your, you know, your compatriots, everybody in your veteran community, every service member's story. Everybody that has served or serves, their voice needs to be heard. Thank you so much for joining us for this African American, you know, History Month special. I'm your brother Hush, and I'll see you on the next episode. Peace.
so what are the the for from your perspective for storytellers for communicators what are the three things that they ultimately have to do to become successful have a, a compelling hook what's that what's that lamest terms <laughs> <laughs> why should we be interested in your story so uh, I feel a compelling hook is whatever the uh, the most intriguing, the most interesting part of the story, tease us with that in the very beginning. Um, and, and you're going to hear more about it later on. So, so that's a compelling hook. The second part is paint a picture with your words. Don't say, all right, he scored 27 on the test. You know, he, he, he with an overwhelming weight on his shoulders, he sauntered into the room thinking about what what just happened you know just uh, you have to to put the participant in the story and not necessarily with you know multi-syllable words but it but in a way that that keeps folks interested and explaining what you want them to feel so if you can paint a picture with and make people feel it i think that's that's success and then the the last piece of it is that you you've got to be tough in absorbing criticism so if you don't have a, a circle of, of, of people around you with a trusted that provide a trusted set of eyes that provide you know critical editing that are truth tellers not just yes people um, then you're doing yourself a disservice because you you have to be tough in this game without question all right I think I think some people can do that. <laughs> I think some folk can do that. They're just taking notes right now. They're like, I can do that right now. Okay. And make sure you just get a copy of the AP style book and make sure that is right. Now, um, let's oh, wait, wait, go. the AP style book, you tell the, tell the listeners what the AP oh, style Oh my gosh, guide listen, is. I'm gonna let y'all Google that. <laughs> I'm not gonna go down that rabbit hole because the book off the record and warrior voices, I don't know. I'm gonna go for the book first. Okay. So what, off, the record. off the record, what compelled you to write that book? Public and, affairs officers. What is the whole objective? Uh, public affairs officers um, always, well, not always. I won't. I won't generalize it. As a public affairs officer, and there are some enlisted folks doing it now. Also, um, we're writing all the time. But one of the benchmarks for our craft is to get published. So, for years, I've been talking about writing a book. Eighty-seven percent of folks, according to the New York Times, say talk about writing a book. 3% actually commit to it and get it done. When I was thinking of writing the book, I thought of war and peace, you know, 88,000 words. And then at the, at the other end of the spectrum is, is Hemingway's shortest story ever written, baby shoes for sale, never worn. And that's a whole nother podcast we get into. So, so what was in between? For me, I sat down with a, a bunch of my public affairs geeks and said, hey, hey, let's get this book thing done, okay? Put some money in the middle, identify a time hack and get it done. You got 72 hours, who's in? They did it, I won, off the record exists now because of that. So for me, um, it, it's all the, and, and there are some errors in here, there are some mistakes in here. 72 hours, it is not perfect. And I would, I would have even changed the title. And right now it's one public affairs officer's ground rules. Looking back and now talking to folks, uh, and, and I give this book to anyone who asked for it, as I walk around my battalion, anywhere I have a duty posted, a person who is, who is watching the battalion while I'm not there, um, I ask them, what's the last book they read? And if they give me the, the, the high shoulder, I don't know, I, I give them a copy of the book um, because it's written so that you can read it in 45 minutes. And when, it, when it hit the streets on amazon.com, it was the number one book 45, in the 45 minute category, it was number one. It's like number seven or eight now. Um, but it was all my lessons learned, all my bumps, bruises, lumps, and dumps as a young public affairs officer that I want to give to those coming behind me, officer or enlisted, valuable lessons learned. If you, if you take nothing else from the book, take, please take my command philosophy. And I, and I talked about it earlier here. Um, and, and it's not about making money. So that's the other thing I learned. And that, not to discourage authors, but don't go into writing books about making money. Very few, unless you're Grisham or Rawlings or you know those names, is not about making money. I hate to burst your bubble, but 
if brother hush if we're being real don't go into it for the money go into it for the craft and to share the knowledge mm 